Okay, so what I want to do today, I'll be glad to work some web work with you, for you. Are you getting anywhere on that? Yes. Is it on the five, three, five, four homework? Yeah. Look at that, I ran it off. Number seven, you said? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna look here at number seven. So your numbers might be different, but the idea is the same. Gotta remind you of your identities, maybe. Well, I didn't bring them. Um, so, so, so let me, before I work this, tell you, I guess, what we have so far in terms of our sum formulas, our, um, double angle formulas. So let's take a break while everybody fills in. And this is what we have so far. These are the identities that I need you to know. And then I'll list the identities that I'll give you on a handout. Okay, so the basic definitions of our trig functions that the secant of any angle is one over the cosine of that angle. And so you can even write this the other way. The cosine of any angle is one over the secant of the angle. Same deal with the cosecant. The cosecant of an angle is one over the sine. And I can write that as the sine is one over the cosecant. The tangent of any angle is the sine over the cosine. And its reciprocal is called the cotangent. So if I write this in terms of the cotangent, the cotangent of any angle is the cosine over the sine. And that's one over the tangent. Okay, then the Pythagorean identities, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one, which can be arranged to say that sine squared of an angle is one minus cosine squared of the angle, or I can rearrange it to say cosine squared of an angle is one minus sine squared of the angle. We have a version of this with tangents that says tangent squared plus one is equal to secant squared, which we can rearrange that to say tangent squared is secant squared minus one. I need A. And then we have the version of the Pythagorean identities with the cotangent that says one plus the cotangent squared of an angle is the cosecant squared. Or I can rearrange it to say that the cotangent squared is cosecant squared minus one. Then we have, 
this thing doing down here? I don't want that down there. Well, don't tell me any. Let's move over. Don't move over either. How about I zoom less? Maybe. We had the um, even and odd functions that tell us what happens if you've got the minus the angle inside the parentheses. The two even functions were cosine and secant, which says that cosine of minus an angle is minus the cosine, oops, sorry, is positive cosine of the angle. Same deal with the secant. All of the rest of them are odd, so that if I uh, rewrite uh, sine, cos uh, sine tangent, cosecant, cotangent in terms of minus the angle, then I get the same value as the original trig function, but with a minus sign in front of it. So the other ones say that the sine of minus the angle is minus the sine of the angle. Uh, cosecant is one over the sine. So cosecant of minus the angle is minus the cosecant of the angle. Tangent of minus the angle is minus tangent of the angle and cotangent. So these two were said to be even, the remaining four are odd. Those are the ones that we've been using throughout the semester. And now the identities that I plan on giving to you. Move that up a bit. I'll give you these. We have the cosine of the sum of two angles. The cosine goes cosine, cosine minus sine, sine. Cosine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, minus sine of the first angle, sine of the second angle. Now, if I change that to minus, the cosine of A minus B just has a plus sign here. So I'm gonna save me some writing by just sharing with you that if the minus sign is between the two angles, use the plus sign between the two functions. Then we have the sine of A plus B. The sine of A plus B goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine of the first one, cosine of the second one, has the same operation in between. And then cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. And in a similar manner, if I've got the A minus B identity, and I put the minus sign in there. We were able to write the tangent of A plus B. As either sine of A plus B over cosine of A plus B, if you happen to have those, or um, tangent of A plus the tangent of B all divided by one minus the tangent of A times the tangent of B. 
if I've got the tangent of A minus B, you change the signs in between. Then our double angle identities, I'm gonna put them up in here. Well, you don't need the double angle identities. If you want, just replace B with A and then you'll have the double angle formulas. But I'll write it out anyway. We had three versions for the double angle for the cosine. The cosine of twice an angle can be written as the cosine squared of the angle minus the sine squared of the angle. I can replace either sine squared or cosine squared with these guys up here. And then I can rewrite this several different ways. One way is to say that it's the same as two times the cosine squared of the angle minus one, or it's one minus two times the sine squared of the angle. The sine of twice an angle looks like two times the sine of the angle, cosine of the angle, and the tangent of twice the angle looks like two times the tangent of the angle divided by one minus the tangent squared of the angle. Everything here. And the ones I add today are the ones that you do not need to memorize. And I don't consider the other ones memorizing because you've been using them. I think you should know them by using them so much. Yes. No, because what was rewritten about the cosine was that these had the squares of the functions and these have the first degree. So we don't have the Pythagorean identities for those. I'll probably type all this up nicely and put it on Blackboard, um, the formula sheet that you can get used to using. Okay, so I am going to look at the web work problem now and see if I need any of these. We are doing web work problem number seven. So I might have to put this paper up there again on and off maybe, or you just keep your notebook open to look at the formulas. So here's web work problem number seven. You're given sine of u to be nine over 41, and you're told that cosine is positive. So that should be enough to tell you in which quadrant we find angle u. Both sine and cosine are positive simultaneously. Quadrant one, right? So this is here to tell us that when both are positive, we're in quadrant one. Then we're supposed to find the rest of these. Um, if you know the sine of u, you know this value of all six trig functions. So let's go ahead and get the cosine of u first. I'm going to do that by drawing a triangle in quadrant one with angle u as the base angle, base to the origin. So this would be the positive x-axis right here. There's angle u. And then the sign in terms of sides of the triangle would be the y value or the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And now we have to find the x coordinate here to get the cosine. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem that x squared plus nine squared has to be 41 squared. So I have x squared plus 81 is, well, let me figure out what 41 squared is. Looks like it's 1681, which is kind of nice because now I can subtract 81 from both sides and get 1600. And I know the square root of 1600 is 40. I'm sorry? 
Dan, you want to watch my arithmetic? How embarrassing. So I found this side to be 40. Can you look at that triangle and tell me what the cosine of angle U is? Over? 40 over 41. Cosine of U is 40 over 41. Now to get the sine of u plus pi over two, I've got to use the sum formula. The sum formula for the sine goes sine, cosine, plus, cosine, sine, where we change the angles after the plus sign. So this one's going to go, I'll write it up here. Sine of u, cosine of pi halves, plus cosine of u, sine of pi halves. What is the cosine of pi halves and what is the sine of pi halves? Cosine of pi halves? Zero. zero. Sine of pi halves? So if this is zero, then that multiplies with that to give me zero. This is one and I just found cosine of u to be 40 over 41. So I have zero plus one times 40 over 41, which is gonna be 40 over 41. We could have known that without the addition formula because that's the statement of the co-function identity. Sine and cosine take on the same value 90 degrees apart. Now let's get the cosine of u plus pi so that I can just get this one by taking the ratio of those two. Cosine of u plus pi, the cosine identity goes cosine, cosine minus sine, sine. So this will go cosine u cosine pi minus sine u sine pi. Does anybody know what the sine of pi is? This number is zero right here. So everything behind the minus sign is gonna to multiply to zero. Cosine of pi, it's negative one. And cosine of u we have already is 40 over 41. And so I put the product right in here, negative 40 over 41. I said I was gonna get the tangent of u plus pi by using the sine over the cosine. So the next one I'm gonna do is the sine of u plus pi. And the sine identity again goes sine, cosine, plus cosine, sine. So I can write that right here. Sine of u, cosine of pi, plus sine of pi, cosine of u. Cosine of pi was negative one, sine of pi was zero. So all of that zero back here. Sine of u is given as nine over 41. So when I multiply those two together, I get a negative nine over 41. And that's the way we overcome using that tangent formula when you get something that's undefined in the numerator and the denominator. So I think the problem was with the pi over two in the tangent formula. But now I can get tangent of u plus pi by taking the sine of u plus pi and dividing it by the cosine of u plus pi. So I'm gonna take negative nine over 41 and I'm going to divide it by negative 40 over 41. So the negatives will cancel, the 41s will cancel, and I get nine over 40. Okay.
that too scrunched together? Now you know what I have to look at when you turn your tests in. Scrunchy scribbles. Got another one? Okay, number 10, it says, use the sum formula to fill in the blanks in the identity below. Give exact answers, do not use decimals. Your answer should be a fraction or an integer. If the answer requires a square root, enter it as a square root. Okay, I know that. So it just says expand the sign of x plus pi over four and then compare it to what's written on the right-hand side there. So the sine of x plus pi over four should be, remember the sine identity, sine identity goes sine, cosine plus, cosine, sine. So I need the sine of x, cosine of pi over four, plus the other way, cosine of x, sine of pi over four. Sine and cosine of pi over four, both the same. Both square root of two over two. So I get square root of two over two times the sine of x plus the square root of two over two times the cosine of x. And those are the numbers that go in the blanks. Both of them involve square root of two over two. So when they prompt you at a particular type of answer, just that's kind of giving you half of a hint. Work your way toward getting your solution in that form and then just enter the two numbers. Okay. What else? All good? All right, I'm gonna give you some half angle formulas today. Half angle formulas. All right, so you don't have to write this part. I'll have it printed up in the notes. You can just watch this part for me. Pretend you're interested. Give me your interested face. There you go. Good answer. Good answer. Okay, we're in section 5.6 talking about the half angle formulas. So those are to help us, if we know the trig functions of an angle A, with these formulas, we're gonna be able to figure out the trig functions of angle A divided by two. So for instance, if we know the sine of 30 degrees, we can find the sine of 15 degrees. If we know the sine of 45 degrees, we could find the sine of 22 and a half degrees. Okay, that's what these formulas are gonna help us with. We have um, that cosine of two, so I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna derive the half angle formulas for sine and cosine by starting first with the cosine of twice an angle looks like two times cosine squared of the angle minus one. That was one of the versions of the double angle formula. Now in this line, I want you to replace every A with A divided by two. So I'm gonna have the cosine of two times A divided by two is equal to two times the cosine squared of A divided by two minus one. And I'm going to solve this formula for this cosine right here. I'm gonna solve for cosine squared, 
This simplifies to the cosine of A. And that'll give us the formula for the cosine of A divided by two. Because two times A over two just gives me the cosine of A. I have to peel the operations off from the outside in. So the operation I peel off first is subtracting one. So I'm gonna add one over here. I'm just gonna put it, let me see how I wanna put it. I wanna put it in the front. So I'm gonna add one. The next thing I get rid of is this two. So I'm gonna take the one plus cosine A and divide it by two. And the last step is to take the square root. But there are two numbers I can square to get a positive number. So I've got to write this as a plus or minus the square root. We'll have to be given some information to know which one we need to use. So here's our um, half angle formula for the cosine. I'll put it right here, that the cosine of A divided by two is plus or minus the square root of that fraction that I have over there, one plus the cosine of A over two. That's our first one. We use the second version and the same sequence of steps to find the half angle formula for the sine of A over two. The other version we have of the cosine of twice an angle is one minus twice the sine squared of the angle. So now next start with cosine of twice the angle is one minus two sine squared of the angle. And now let's replace each A with A over two. So as before, two times A over two is gonna to simplify to A. Then I'll have an A over two in here. And I'm going to do the same sequence of steps to solve for the sine squared. I'm going to subtract one. Then I'm gonna divide by negative two. But I'm gonna take the minus sign from the two and put it in the numerator. And when I put this in the numerator, it changes the sign of both terms. So take that minus sign to get that with that one, make that a positive one. This minus sign to here makes that a minus. So I can rewrite this as one minus the cosine of A over positive two is equal to the sine squared of A over two. And then as before, the last step is to take the square roots. And so the sine of A over two looks just like the cosine of A over two, but it's going to have a minus sign in between the terms. It's plus or minus the square root of the fraction, one minus the cosine of A, all divided by two. That sine squared of A over two plus cosine squared of A over two is equal to one. Is that the one you're talking about? Um, sine of two It'd been harder to solve that one because it would have two different trig functions in it. The benefit of this identity is that it has just one trig function in it. And that's the one I'm looking for. Okay. But I could have used that the cosine squared of A over two plus the sine of squared of A over two is equal to one and put that in where the cosine squared was. That would work as well. When you see how all these identities look alike, isn't it nice to know about the order and symmetry that exists in our world? These, they just differ by a sign. It's just so convenient. 
That's much easier than converting inches to feet to yards to miles. Where the heck did that come from? How many cups are in a quart? I don't know. I look that up every single time. Okay, there are, uh, to get the tangent of A over two, probably the easiest way is to write it as the sine of A over two divided by the cosine of A over two. So I'm going to have this square root divided by that square root. But when you have a square root on top and the square root on the bottom, it's just as convenient to share one big square root sign. So I'm going to put the sign of 1 minus cosine of A divided by 2. There's the sine of A over 2 divided by the cosine of A over 2. Now visualize the step where you take the fraction on the bottom, flip it over and multiply it with the fraction on top to get the twos to cancel. So that two is gonna cancel with that two. This is gonna be above that. And here's the first version of the tangent of A over two. It's one minus the cosine of A divided by one plus the cosine of A. There are two other versions for the tangent of a half angle. I don't know why we would need them. Maybe we could get away with not having them, but since they're there, I may as well share them with you. It involves a little bit trickier algebra. There are two more versions of this identity. Starting with this first sentence here that the tangent of A over two is the sine of A over two over the cosine of A over two. And then I'm gonna multiply top and bottom of that by the cosine of A over two. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the cosine of A divided by 2, because it is legal to multiply by 1. And then this is very similar to the double angle formula for the sine if it had a 2 here. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. And now 2 times the sine of an angle times the cosine of the angle is the double angle formula for the sine. So I double the angle that's in there, twice A over two gives me A. So my numerator becomes two times the sine of A. Downstairs, I have two times the cosine squared of A over two. We're gonna take care of that here. Here's the cosine of A over two. So when I square that, even if it's negative, when I square that, I just get the stuff that's inside the square root sign. So for the cosine squared of A over two below, I'm just gonna put in one plus cosine A divided by two. So here is where I'm gonna put in, I keep my numerator two times the sine of A, keep this two. Here I'm gonna put one plus the cosine of A, over two, those twos cancel here to here. And then the other version looks like two sine A divided by one minus cosine of A. To get the third version, I do the same deal. I start with that, but this time I multiply 
um, top and bottom by the sine of a so that I have a sine squared of a over two and I make that replacement. So I'll just give you the other version of it right here. It looks like one minus the cosine of a divided by um, sine of a by doing very similar steps. So the three forms of the tangent of A over two is this one, this one, and this one. And so let me put them up here for you with my next examples. See, wasn't that fun to watch where they came from? I'm sorry? Yeah, that one's one of them. That's what I meant to circle. Okay. None of those are plus or minus. So that's a, one way to help find out what quadrant angle A over two is in. So here are the identities. Let me highlight them here. We've got these two. So there's all the derivations of that I just did. And then we've got the three for the tangent of A over two, that one and these two. So in um, number one, I say find the exact value of the sine of 15 degrees using a half angle formula. And then to remind you that we can find the sine of 15 degrees by using the difference formula. So I'm going to do both of those, and then the calculator will show that they're both equal to the sine of 15 degrees. So first, let's do this with the fact that 15 degrees is half of 30 degrees. So to get the sine of 15 degrees, we will use the half angle formula where A is 30. So I'm going to put the square, I know where 15 degrees is. 15 degrees is in quadrant one. So that allows me to use the positive square root. All the values of the sign are positive in quadrant one. So since we're in quadrant one, I use the positive square root of one minus the cosine of A, angle A is the 30, divided by two. I've used the positive square root because 15 degrees is in quadrant one. Do you know the cosine of 30 degrees? 30 degrees is the same as pi over six. Does anybody know the cosine of pi over six? Square root of three over two. So here I get the square root of one, oh, this pencil's had it. Does that not happen every freaking time? Nope. How to use that stupid, oh, there's it. There's lead, life is good. One minus the square root of three over two divided by two. You might be asked to simplify stuff like this on web work. And one way to get rid of this two that appears in the numerator is to take the whole numerator and the whole denominator and multiply by two. So I'll take an answer like this, but if you need to make things match in web work, you multiply by two here, and whatever you do on the top, you have to do on the bottom. And so we get the sine of 15 degrees is equal to, send that two through the parentheses. So I gotta hit the one with the two, then the two cancels here, and then two times two is four. Square root of four is a perfect square, so I can pull it out of the radical sign and just keep the radical in the numerator. And that would be the simplified version of the sine of 15 degrees. 
that's pretty quick, especially when you compare it to do using a difference formula. By a difference formula, we'll get the following. I'm going to use the sign of A minus B is the sine of A cosine of B minus the cosine of A sine of B. And I'm finding two angles that subtract to 15 degrees. The ones that pop to my head are 45 degrees minus 30. I could also use 60 degrees minus 45. But I'll go with the sign of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So A is 45, B is 30. We need to find the sine of 45 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, minus the cosine of 45 degrees, sine of 30 degrees. Both sine and cosine at 45 degrees are squared of two over two. 30 degrees was pi over six. Sine of pi over six was a half cosine squared of three over two. Thank you, thank you very much. Square root of two over two times square root of three over two minus square root of two over two times a half. So that simplifies to square root of two times square root of three minus two all divided by four. And I said your answers are gonna look different, but they're the same. They're the same when you compare them on a calculator. They're both 0.25881904.51 ish. All right, I got a backside, so I got to flip that over. You guys done writing that stuff down? We okay in there? All right, next problem. Given the cosine of x, find the sine and tangent of x over 2. Given the cosine of angle x, find the sine and tangent of x over 2. And then we'll decide what quadrant angle x over 2 is in. Maybe. This says that angle x is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. That puts us in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to draw a triangle in quadrant four. There's the x-axis. There's my triangle. There's angle x. Cosine represents the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And we've got our three, four, five triangle here. The four is going to be negative since the y values are negative in quadrant four. Hang on to that. Now we're going to write out the sine of x over two. The sine of x over two is the square root. Well, I need to decide on plus or minus. The square root of one minus the cosine of x divided by two. And we're given the cosine of x to be three fifths. So let's sub that in right here, plus or minus the square root of one minus three fifths over two. One minus three fifths is two fifths because think of that one as five over five. So I have two fifths divided by two. Think of that as a two over one, flip and multiply, two fifths times one half gives us one fifth. So the sine of X over two is plus or minus the square root of one fifth. One is a perfect square, so I can go ahead and take the square root of it and write that.
So I'll decide on the plus or minus after I compute the tangent. Maybe that will help me. Maybe it won't. We'll find out. The tangent of x over 2 can be written in terms of the sine of x and the cosine of x. I'm going to use the tangent of x over 2. Where did I put it? I'm going to use I'm going to use this one is one minus the cosine of x over the sine of x. One minus the cosine of x over the sine of x. Because I have cosine and sine in my triangle. Cosine of x is 3 fifths, sine of x is negative 4 fifths. So let's fill that in. 1 minus 3 fifths divided by um, negative 4 fifths. Again, 1 minus 3 fifths is 2 fifths. Then I'm going to take that and divide by negative 4 fifths. So I get 2 fifths. Get out of there, negative sign. Times negative 5 fourths. The fives cancel. 2 over 4 gives me a negative one half. I don't think that's enough information to tell me what the sign of that is. So I think I have to leave both of them. I can't figure out what, what the sign of the sign of X over two is going to be just by looking at that. Uh, I don't know the cosine of X over two. I didn't find that one. And that also has a radical sign on it. But I do know that the tangent is negative. So I don't know what sign to choose here. So we'll keep the plus and minus there. Because if I have a quadrant four angle, for instance, an example of a quadrant four angle is 300 degrees. Divide that angle by two, and we get an angle of 150 degrees. So it's possible that angle x over two is in quadrant two. But another version of an angle in quadrant four would be something like an angle of negative 30 degrees. Half of that is negative 15 degrees. So it's possible it's still in quadrant four. So knowing that cosine of X is in quadrant four doesn't give me enough information to tell me where angle X over two is. Could be quadrant four, could be quadrant two, and I bet I can come up with examples that puts me uh, in quadrant three maybe. Okay, so I'll just leave the plus and minus there. <laughs> Okay, the next one. The next one says, find the exact value of the tangent of 67.5 degrees. And so the clue is, you see the half there, that's, that's half of an angle that we know and love. So let's double that to see what angle we get if we were to double 67.5. Two times 7.5 is 15, two times 60 is 120. 120 plus 15 is 135. Is that an angle we know how to find the tangent of? 67.5 degrees is equal to 135 degrees divided by two. 135 degrees is 45 degrees short of being 180 degrees. So that means it has a reference angle of 45 degrees, right? The reference angle for 135 degrees is 45 degrees. So I can find the tangent of 135 degrees over two. And that's what we'll do. The tangent of 67.5 degrees is the tangent of this version of A over two. So why don't I just use that same identity that I used a minute ago. I take the numerator as my angle 
evaluate the sine and cosine of that angle and then fill it in this formula. So it's one minus the cosine of 135 degrees divided by the sine of 135 degrees. And remember that 135 degrees is in quadrant two. In quadrant two, cosine's negative, <coughs> sine is positive. The reference angle is 45 degrees, so they're both squared at two over two. So I get one minus negative squared at two over two divided by the positive squared at two over two. Again, cosine is positive in quadrant two. Those two minus signs together will put me a one plus that radical in the numerator. You can leave it like that, but perhaps for web work purposes, I'll clear the fractions by multiplying top and bottom by two. So that two knocks that one into a two, cancels the two on the bottom here, knocks that two out and leaves me this. There's the exact value of the tangent of 67 and a half degrees. So now you know if somebody today says, hey, What's a tangent of 67 and a half degrees? You'll say, oh, of course, it's two plus the square root of two all divided by the square root of two. And maybe if I see you later, I'll ask you. That's not even general. What is two plus the square root of two all divided by two? It should be. These are the only points I get. Nah, nah, you can. I mean, what, you'd multiply top and bottom by the square root of two? So you can, but I don't know. I, I'll have to look at web work. I don't know. Web work makes you do some mean and evil things, doesn't it? Just a little torture device we have. It lies to you. Lies to you? What do you mean it lies to you? Never. I'm trying to get you ready for real lives. You got to be used to things lying to you and making you work a little bit harder to get something that's not that hard to get. Real life is brutal. Stay in college. All right, simplify the expression one minus the cosine of eight X over two square root of that plus and minus. So I say, aha. A plus and minus a square root, that sure looks like a half angle formula. It's got the minus sign on top. I know minus signs belong with sine. So I'm gonna remind you that the sine of A divided by two takes that very same form. One minus the cosine of the single angle over two. So that has the form of the right hand <laughs> side where angle A is 8x. If angle A is 8x, that means angle A over 2 is 4x. So there's my answer. One liner. You like that one? Okay. I request that one will be on the test. I remember. We're doing more than learning just for the test, aren't we? We're learning for that pure joy of learning. So basically, anytime it asks me to simplify, it's just asking for like the other side. Recognize the identity, right? Recognize what you're given. Okay. All right, we got another page somewhere. You like verifying identities? I got identities for you to verify. I got five of them. Let's see, that's page three and four. You guys know I scan my notes right after class and I post them on Blackboard. 
So if you're ever missing a piece, it's all in there. Now, when we're verifying identities, start with one side, use known <laughs> identities and try to get to the other side. Blurry clear. This first one claims that two times the sine squared of 2a plus the cosine of 4a is equal to 1. I have a chat question. Thank you. All right, let me click on my chat question. It's in quadrant four. Which one? We're going back to x over two. How do I know it's in quadrant four? Hmm. Let's see, because tangent was negative, but I didn't know what the sine of the sine or cosine were. I don't know. I still don't think we can get that. Back. Oh, okay, fine. Well, thanks for participating, Jace. I appreciate it. I gotta look more often. Okay. All right, so we got all these multiple angles here and we're trying to show that this is one. When I see a sine squared, I like its buddy to be there. I know sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So somehow in this identity, I want to get a cosine squared of 2a so that I could pair it up with the sine squared of 2a. So I recognize, well, 2a is half of 4a, right? <clears throat> or 4a is twice 2a. I'm going to start by saying that. I'm going to copy down the left-hand side. That's the side I'm going to work with. But in the next step, I'm going to say that 4a is 2 times 2a. And that's hinting that in my next step, I'm going to use a double angle formula for the cosine. So I pull out my double angle formula. And I'm going to ask you which one might be one that you would want to use. Should I use, okay, I'm going to use a double angle formula. Should I use that the cosine of twice an angle is the cosine squared of the angle minus the sine squared of the angle? Should I use that it's two times the cosine squared of the angle minus one? Or does it look like this one would work better? You like the last one. All right, let's use the last one then, where angle theta is 2a. I like that plan too. We're going to use this one where theta is two times a. So we still have this here. Plus, now we're gonna replace cosine of two theta with one minus two sine squared of theta, where I said theta was two a. And we're done because I have a two sine squared two a in front a two sine squared 2a in the back with a minus. Those little colors add together to give me zero. And so we've got the one that we were looking for. So I had to recognize that I can go down in size with angle 4a, I think in a, a twice 2a and then finding an identity that fit my needs. Can you also from the start just use delta 2a squared equal 4a? 2a squared doesn't equal 4a. 2a squared equals 4a squared. 
right? But again, the square is on the trig function and not on the angle. So I can't put the square that's on the side on the angle, okay? All right, here's the next one. This sum is one. You gotta figure out why that's one. So let's see. Let's look at our tangent of x over two formulas and see if there's anything that might help us to write tangent of x over two in terms of tangent of x. Where are my identities? All right, let's see. This one at least has the same stuff as that in it. How about I use this version of the tangent of X over two? So I'm gonna use tangent of A over two is the sine of a over one plus the cosine of a, but I'm going to use a as x in our example. So I'm going to keep this here. And I'm going to get this out of there. It's a tangent squared, so I'm going to have to square that, right? Sine of A, A, I said A is X, sine of X divided by one plus the cosine of X all squared because of that. And so I'm going to put the square on both the numerator and the denominator. So let's keep the first bit the same. And write that as the sine squared of X. And down here I have one plus the cosine of X squared. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, to subtract, I need a common denominator. This is the bigger of the two denominators, so I've got to multiply the first fraction by one plus cosine of x over one plus the cosine of x. Well, I may have taken the long route, but you got time. I'll multiply top and bottom here by one plus the cosine of X. So now they both have the common denominator. I'll just write that once. And here I'll distribute this as two plus two cosine of X minus sine squared of X. That doesn't look anywhere close to one, does it? But I can get sine squared out of there. Sine squared is the same as one minus cosine squared. Then I have everything in terms of cosines. one minus cosine squared is sine squared. I'm almost there. But I did take the long way. When I distribute the minus sign in here, this becomes minus one plus cosine squared. The minus one is going to add to that to give me a positive one. So I'm going to have one plus two cosine of X plus cosine squared of X. 
but I'm going to write it in descending order from powers of cosine. I'm going to write that as cosine squared of x plus 2 cosine of x. And then again, 2 minus 1 gives me plus 1. This factors on top. This factors on top as, let's see, to get the cosine squared, I factor that as cosine times cosine. Then factors of one with the same sign that add to positive two would both be one. Cosine of x plus one times the cosine of x plus one is the cosine of x plus one all squared. Bring it up in here. Columns. So I'm going to write that as the cosine of x plus one all squared over one plus the cosine of x squared. And cosine of x plus 1 is the same as 1 plus the cosine of x. So I have the same thing in the numerator and the denominator. So they cancel and leave me 1. But by gosh, I guarantee there was a shorter way to do that problem. I just didn't find it. I bet the shorter way. I don't know. I don't know what the shorter way would be. Oh, I bet I do know. Here's another way I could have done that. Look at this expression here and look at that expression there. That's the stuff under the radical sign upside down. So I could have said that that was the same as one over the cosine squared of a over two. And one over the cosine squared of a over two is the secant squared of a over two. And then there's an identity between secant squared and tangent squared. I could have had it done like that. That would have been no fun, huh? So here it's cosine squared plus two cosine x plus one. How'd you get rid of the two? Well, two, I didn't get rid of it. I factored. I factored. Cosine times cosine will give me the cosine squared. Cosine times one gives me cosine. Cosine times one gives me cosine. So I got two of them. We got to get used to factoring trig functions because in the next chapter, we're going to solve trig equations. And one of the things that we'll use in solving trig equations is factoring them. So you got to brush up on your factoring skills. Um, I'll keep, so I don't regret doing it this long way. A little foreshadowing. Ooh. We probably have time for one more. Hey, Josh, I heard that. Sine squared of x over two is equal tangent of x minus sine of x divided by two times the tangent of x. Holy smoly. We can do it. Maybe. What I'm going to do is replace the sine of x over two with the square root of one minus the cosine of x over two. I don't have to worry about plus or minus because I've got a sine squared in this problem. So I'm going to start with the sine squared of x over 2 and write it as the square root of 1 minus the cosine of x over 2 all squared. So I just put that identity in for my sine of x over 2. When I square it, I lose the plus and minus, and I lose the square root sign.
Okay, now I look up here and I've got a tangent in the first slot and a tangent in the numerator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this fraction now and multiply it by tangent over tangent. Distribute that tangent to put a tangent in this first slot. Then I have minus the cosine of X times the tangent of X. And then I have two times the tangent of X. Almost, right? I'm almost there. The tangent is the sine over the cosine. So I'm now gonna replace this one particular tangent with sine over cosine. I'm gonna leave these guys alone. I got them where I need them. I'm gonna replace this tangent with sine of X over cosine of X, and then you'll see that we're done. Because the cosine that's next to the sine over the cosine cancels with this one down here. And there she be, tangent of X minus the sine of X all over two times the tangent of X. Okay. I got two more to finish next time and then we'll pop into chapter six. So be productive this weekend and maybe get all of your web work done. And those of you who are missing web works, let me know and I can reopen them for you. Let's get your web work grades up. Okay? An all trig weekend. So I'm I'm missing some, but can I email you? Email me and I'll open them up. Everybody. Get your grades up. Get your grades up. Get your grades up. Don't wait till the last minute to do that. You can find, uh, you said that you treat the average rate the same as all the test rates. Yes. So you can like average all the web You see, if you look on web work, you see there's a percentage that's given. But what I'm going to do is drop your two lowest and then okay. compute the average of that as a score okay. out of 100. Okay. And then that adds so, with your. So you, two so you teach calculus too. Right? I have. Do you teach or do you like do the same? Grading system? Like um, no. Teach, 